right guys, Jay Stevens here. Welcome back to the Lure Making Cove. The collection keeps growing and today we got a new mold. Today what we're gonna do, we're gonna make some jigs with this brand new Do It Molds. This is called the Hybrid Grass Jig. This is like a swim jig mold. Uh, you could also use it like as a flipping style jig, but we're gonna make a couple of these. I'm gonna head on the water with my boy Brandon on the kayaks, maybe the boat, I'm not even sure yet. They'll be warm out of the molds right into the fish's mouth. All right, so what I like about this mold is it's got multiple sizes. So you've got three eighth, half ounce, five eighths, three quarter ounce. So I mean, you might find a size you like and keep making a bunch, but I like the variety mold so you can make a bunch of different lures with the same mold. All right, so below all the sizes here on the right side, you can see hook size. So five aught, four aught, four aught, three aught. You can use different sizes, but the recommended hooks are often, you know, pretty ideal. Today, we're using the Victory Black Nickel hooks made for these. I got a couple bulk sets. We're gonna start dropping some hooks in. There's the five aught, the big mama. And then we've got a couple four aughts. These are beefy hooks. This is like the type of stuff you can winch a big old large mouth out with. And you've got the baby three out on the side. All right, the next step is these little pins. These little pins right here, that is what leaves the cavity to put the weed guard in. So we're gonna put those in. These are very easy to lose. So I'd try to make a nice home for them somewhere in your we were making cave. And then we're gonna close it up. And you wanna hear that tinging. You wanna make sure it's closing properly. Make sure it's nice and flush. If it's not, you're gonna pour lead in there and it's gonna kind of shoot all over the place. Before we get any further, safety first. We got our lead pot fired up. I'm gonna put a little more lead in here. We're gonna skim off that junk off the top and we're gonna start pouring some jigs. Jay's jigs, you might say. Those turned out okay. So something to keep in mind is if you warm up the mold, which I didn't do, it'll pour better into the collar. Right now you can see the collars didn't fill in nicely on all of them. That's my fault. So I'll probably melt these off and do another round. The other thing I'll sometimes do is I'll either use a torch to heat up that mold or I'll just pour lead in it without hooks just to keep warming up that cavity so when you do actually pour it, it fills it properly. Those are good. The one didn't pour properly, but that's, that's pretty good. Got a couple good jigs there. We're gonna pull that weed guard hole out and we're gonna break this sprue off the top. And even right there, that's a pretty sweet looking swim bait jig. I would, like that's a perfect size for walleyes. That's the medium sized. And this one didn't pour a nice collar. We could probably still use it, but I'm gonna pull that pin out. I'm just gonna save that hook. So I'm gonna just put it back in and melt that lead off and we'll use that later. All right, well, I think the mold's getting hot. So we're just gonna cruise through a bunch now and then we're gonna get to the next step. All right, look, oh, some of those are hot. Oh, that's hot. All right, so we've got a pretty good mess of jigs here. And like I said, I think some of these jigs would be just great jigs as is. As a walleye swim bait jig right there, I think you put like a two, three inch swim bait and that's perfect. I don't think you need to do anything to it. You could paint it, you don't have to paint it. Um, but the thing about this jig is you can accessorize it. You can put the weed guard in, you can put the skirt on, um, you know, a, whatever different trailer you want. So first thing we're gonna do and, and this is a, a step you can easily skip, is it's kind of rough where I break off that sprue, the little spout that I break off. So I can just take a file and just hit it a couple times to smooth it out. It'll just paint a little bit nicer. Once again, not an important step. I'm just gonna go through here and hit it a couple times with the file. And I don't have the proper eyes. I have some small eyes I can put in there. I've actually never put eyes on jigs before. Yeah, these are some sweet jigs. All right, we are now gonna paint. We're using this bubbler. Basically, this is the little um, device that pushes air through the powder paint, through a membrane. It kind of pushes all the particles apart. It gives you a nice even coating. Uh, you lose a lot less paint. Um, yeah, it's, it's, if you paint a lot of jigs, it's definitely the way to go. This is what we're using. It's called ProTech. They've got a million different colors. We're using black. I wanna make a couple of nice black and blue swim jigs, flipping jigs, whatever you wanna call them. But first thing we gotta do is use the heat gun and heat these jigs up.
Do a quick color swap. We've got some like a watermelon type color. Do some white jigs as well. These could be more for walleyes or definitely if there's more of a bait fish pattern I want to throw on the swim jig. All right guys, so remember those little pins that we put in there for the weed guard? If you're not putting a weed guard in, you don't need to worry about the step. If you're putting a weed guard in and you're painting your jig, you do need to worry about this. So I found a drill bit that is the same size and I'm gonna drill out where the weed guard goes because that filled in with paint. So basically I got the drill bit. I'm just gonna drill, drill that paint off. Sometimes you can chip it a bit. So now I've got the weed guard and these you can trim. They're just little pieces of plastic or whatever these fibers are. And they go in the weed guard. You'd put a little dab of glue in there and then that's what keeps it weedless. So when a fish bites, it pinches that down. So you can do some trimming. I'll show you that later, but basically now it'll swim through the water weedless. A fish comes to bite. I'm going to drill these out and we're going to probably some of the bigger ones we're going to turn into weedless jigs. So it's pretty quick. If you wait to do this step later, it'll be a lot more difficult if you bake them. So that's the next thing we're doing with these jigs. All right, before we get to adding a skirt or anything, adding the weed guard eyeballs, we're gonna bake these for, I think about 20 minutes in the oven and that'll just harden all the paint. And that's why you wanna drill that out beforehand. Otherwise it's gonna be a lot tougher to drill that out. Now we wait. All right, so the jigs are out. We've drilled them out. Now we've got these weed guards right here that I showed you before. We can trim them afterwards, but there's gonna be two ends. The one end not being glued together, the other end being a solid chunk. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a dab of crazy glue on the tip that probably way too much. And then I'm just gonna insert it into that hole. And there we go. Make sure it's pressed in. And there's our first jig. Last one, and then we're gonna do some eyeballs on a couple at least. I don't know if I've ever done eyeballs before. Yeah, those lock in pretty good. All right, we're gonna try doing the eyeballs. This is a lot of finesse. We got a bunch of jigs made here. I put eyeballs on. These are the only eyes I had. They're a little bit small, but I don't know. It still looks good. One thing you will notice is with crazy glue, it'll leave kind of a white residue. So that's something I'm still trying to dial in because um, it kind of makes the jigs a little bit cloudy, but there you have it. So next I'll show you right here. Right now is you can get these pre-made skirts. I only got a couple of them, but black and blue jig is a classic. And yeah, basically you just thread it onto the hook past the collars and there you've got a pretty good looking jig. If I was planning to swim this a little more I probably wouldn't use rattles but if I was going to be flipping it a little more you can get some rattles. Same deal they just slide on the collar. All right so I mean now you got the jig you got the skirt you got the rattles weed guard and then you can decide what to add these aren't necessarily the best matching colors this is a, a ripper swim bait if I was swimming it a little more I'd use you know a swim bait. If I was hopping it more, I might use a craw. This is an eye craw, one I made with a mold as well, right there. That's the reason why you make baits is so you can customize. You can use exactly the colors, exactly the hook. So let's just slip that on. The color might not be the perfect match. That looks pretty good. If I think the crayfish is a little too long, well, maybe just bite off half an inch of it, shorten up your lead. That's a little more uh, compact of a package right there. So if I was flipping, I think that'd be awesome. And if I was thinking, oh, maybe I'm gonna swim it 
a little bit more. And you could definitely put, you know, a three inch swim bit on there. Cover a little more ground, a little more of a swim jig right there. I, I'm pretty proud of that. I think that looks pretty good. I'll show you, you know, some other ways you can modify it on the water, but uh, there you have the hybrid grass jig. And we are headed to the lake now to hopefully set the hook on some largies or whatever eats this. Probably some pike, some pike will probably eat that. So I upgraded trucks this year. Shout out Team Fui and West Coast RV. I got the longer box. That is something that I think every sportsman should have is the longer box on their truck. It is so much better for fitting stuff. I think I'm pretty sure I could fit an ATV here with the door closed. Um, but for the kayaks, I don't need the bed, in, bed extender and stuff. So I think I had a five and a half foot box. Now it's a six and a half foot box on the GMC. So yeah, we're gonna unload some kayaks and go fishing with Jay's jigs, baby. A year later, we actually filmed that lure making a long time ago. Life jackets, always, kids. Life jackets are cool. You know what isn't cool? Drowning. The lure making was only half the adventure. Brandon does a lot of back road, back country adventuring and he's bringing me to one of his honey holes once again. He blindfolded me for the whole drive, which was quite dangerous. And he promised me a large smallmouth. All the best lakes involve muddy feet. Where are the fish at? <laughs> Bye, Brandon. Bye. See you tonight. Yep. Like I'm on a gondola. All right, we're out on the lake doing a little backcountry adventuring, but we got the hybrid jigs here. So there's a lot of different ways you can fish it. Honestly, uh, I think this could be a killer walleye jig if you went without the weed guard. I'll, I'll show you what I all got. I got a couple different options lined up for now. We're just gonna try to hook up. I got the more swim bait style with the white ripper on here. Brandon's got uh, more of a flipping style, a big contraption, a little more bulk to it with rattles. That'll probably catch a pike. Probably get bit off by a pike in the first couple of minutes. But anyways, we're gonna try to get our first couple of fish on our lures we just made six months ago. <coughs> anyways, Jay's jig's back in action. And I tied Brandon to me so he doesn't have to paddle. What's the wager, Brandon? I was thinking about a it. A month's wages. Extra week vacation. <laughs> <laughs> so this being a hybrid jig, it's, you can flip it, you can swim it. Oh, there's a pike. I knew the pike were gonna like this bait. <laughs> Ain't no afraid of no timber. Oh, oh. I got crushed on it. It was like instant, both of us. Nice pike. Oh yeah. I nice. told you this bait was gonna catch pike. Nice fish. The old moose nest. Oh, I can see the pike following me. Or is that a big bass? Oh, that's a big bass. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, he's right out of the boat. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Look at this. That was insane. There, he's at you. Oh. He's right on you. That is not a, oh, there's two. Oh, the pike just got you. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no. That was a nice smallie. This is my first time fishing this lake. I did not know it was grassy. It is a pretty uh, yeah. perfect lake for uh, a weedless jig. Oh. Came for the bass, stayed for the pike. Good weed growth here. If only I had the hybrid grass jig. Oh wait. Oh, and he's on a tiny pike. Or like the hybrid pike jig. There we go. Oh, just missed another. Oh, that was a bass. Was it? I think so, maybe. It's either a pike. I saw it. Or a pretty, oh, oh yeah, baby. Oh, oh, oh. I thought it was a pike, it was so big. Woo. That's what I'm talking about. We cracked it. That's a pretty big smallie. Definitely my biggest this spring. We got our kayaks tied together. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> he just keeps jumping. Jumped into the kayak. There we go. Look at that. Sweet. Nice thing with these big beefy hooks is you can like, you could boat flip a fish like that. I'd say that's uh, probably like a close to 18 inch bass. Beautiful specimen. One for Jay, zero for Brandon. I'm just glad you caught it. Just happy for me. There's 
Some beautiful boulders out here. Oh, huge smallmouth. Right off the nose, right off the nose. Just dropped down. There's a couple. Oh, there he is. Look at this. <laughs> Do you see him? Yeah. Oh, man. Oh. I almost figure ate a smallmouth. Oh, oh, walleye just followed my jigging. Nice. Nice walleye. You get some near that tree there. Got him. Nice. Oh, I lost oh. him. Oh, man. That was too good. Oh. Never know on these backcountry lakes. Got him. There we go. Nice. Oh, look how yellow that walleye is. How did I hook that fish? <laughs> look how I hooked that walleye. He ate it backwards somehow. Hater's gonna say it's fake, but that just happened. That's wild. He must have somehow pinned it to the bottom. Fish are just gorgeous. Well, that was a nice bonus. I'm not completely surprised with this setup. Who knows, maybe we'll get on a walleye pattern. All I know is Brandon's getting spanked. <laughs> I mean, you could flip this with like Brandon's setup with the skirt and the rattles. I, you could flip it and kind of hop it back if you're in real heavy stuff. I'm swimming it, but that's the thing with the jig, you can kind of do everything. You can hop along the bottom, you can swim it high, you can swim it low. Jigs, jigs, baby! Pike will probably eat that. That'll probably catch a pike. Oh, my. There's so many pike on this airline. Yep. Ah! Oh, no. Pike, jig. There we go! Oh, this is why I make my own plastics. Right here, guys. Why do you make your own baits? Well, pike. That looks so good. There we go. That feels good. That feels good. Nice pike. Are we sure we're on the right lake? Stop it. Okay, I need a new bait. Probably some pike. pike. Some, some pike, pike will probably, probably eat that. that. Man, did we cast this good? Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. is that a bite? Yeah, sorry, I was not As anything. I cast over him, no, you're good. Ooh, yeah. he's on the board! Small, he's in the house, and he's off. <laughs> yeah. Is that a walleye? Yep. Another walleye. A little golden delight. Whoa! Brandon? <laughs> oh, this fish has some weight. I think it's a bass. First bass in a while? Yeah, it's a bass. Nice. He's gonna jump in your kayak. <laughs> he's got a stub, he's got a stub nose. Nice, Jay. Well, you know what? How the video is edited, it's gonna look like we just caught back-to-back -back bass, but we actually had a very big lull. It has been slow. We can't really figure them out. There's been quite a few fish following. We're just grinding along. That fish is fat. We'll try it. We got. We don't have too much room here. We'll just squeeze them back there. We put a dent on our hybrid jig collection. I was not expecting to lose this many, but the pike have put a pretty big dent in it. So, anyways, this is what I got now. The kind of a watermelon color. There's a big boulder in front of us, Brandon. There we go. Oh, I just had one too. Walleye? Nice golden walleye? Nice golden walleye. Brandon uses using the bare bones. Just this this stripped down version. Good job, Brandon. Thank you. Nice see you catch one. Yeah. I still can't I still can't catch the bass though. That's what, three walleyes? Yeah, something like that. What you got? Ooh, hoo, hoo. Bass? Yeah. Not that big. Oh, boat slinging Brandon. No tail on that bait. Still Little made guy. it happen. Back to back, Brandon. Back. Oh. That's what we're gonna call you. Tail got chomped. This uh, little area here looks great. That one and that one. Yeah. Oh my. What is that? Pike. Walleye? I think it's a walleye. Oh, is it a walleye? I was just letting my bait fall. Brandon. I was just all that smack talk. I was just explaining to Jay that about the two big boulders and my bait was just sitting on the bottom. Sketchy. Oh. <laughs> you didn't want that one? <laughs> no, he's gone. Some weeds mixed in too. Could that be the combination? Oh. Ooh, come on. Come on. Nice walleye. We are on the walleyes. Nice. 
I think you were right about the wind blown though. Yeah, might be filming a walleye vid now. Open, I'm gonna keep that swim bait between the kayaks. So we are finding that this windblown shoreline has been exponentially better than anything we fished, which shouldn't be a surprise, but uh, yeah. And then kind of boulders mixed with some grass. That was a couple nice walleyes here. Might yeah. Be, might be a few. Man, I wonder how many follows we've had today from bass. That just... Oh, that is a fish. Oh, nice. Another nice walleye. Another walleye. Waldo. I'll never complain about getting on a walleye bite. Somehow, somehow we got that one. Cool. Oh, look at that. It's getting your pants pulled down. A little crazy glue could help that, but these fish can so often just give a cast back and they don't see a lot of angling pressure. On the wall as. Chase jigs. Now taking orders. Actually not. I have gotten videos, I've gotten messages after some of the videos. So Jay, can I buy some of the baits? No, you cannot buy the baits, but you can buy a mold. And the molds are like 40 or 50 bucks. And I love making baits, even just as a hobby. You know, you find a mold you like. This right here, that ripper that I've done a lot of videos with at Swimbait. I have saved so much money on swim baits using those. And then now this jig, I, I've, I've got quite a few molds, but this, this might soon become my favorite swim bait mold. Oh yeah. Oh, nice molly. Yes. Man, I can tell you, I'm glad I have a mold for this lure because we lost so many today from pike bite offs. This was the goal, was like 30 or 40 smallies like this. It's a good size smallie. Well, we went through all of our jigs that we went to the unpainted, unweed guarded version at the end. And uh, I saw that guy follow and eat. Not big by any means, but good that we're figuring something out. This is a fish cat. Oh, oh, ho, ho, ho. that beautiful Walter. I told you. That fish was so shallow. Well, I think the wallers are making up for the bass. What do we got? What do we got? We got a smallmouth. Should I sling him, Brando? Well, hey, we're persistent. Fish are definitely scattered, but uh, they're chowing. Chowing when we find them. But hey, keep grinding. Rome wasn't made today, am I right? Star Wars wasn't filmed in space. Oh, come on. That's, oh, that's a good one. Stay on, baby. Something about Star Wars. That's the biggest bass of the day, I think. Pretty close to that first one. Wish I had a net. Old Billy Bass. Nice. Yeah, sweet. Hit right beside the tree. That was pretty funny timing. If that's the last bass of the day, I'm okay with that. We are calling it. Well, this is like the most basic version possible of the hybrid grass jig, but we fished it through a lot of grass today, fished around a lot of wood, fished it around a lot of pike. It catches a lot of fish. And like I said, for me, I don't do a ton of largey fishing or a ton of fishing in grass, but I think as a swim bait head stripped down for walleyes, it'll get a lot of use just because of that sweet hook placement and the, the wide gap on those victory hooks. So anyways, check it out. The mold is linked below. I'll link some of the soft plastic molds as well. I definitely saved a lot of money today by making my own plastics. As you can see by the bottom of my kayak, I got I, I tore up a lot of baits. And something else to keep in mind is all of these pieces down here, don't throw them away. Those can all get melted back down and turn into new baits. So anyways, guys, um, wear your life jackets on the water. Hope you have a great day.